and she says she will not eat until her son turns himself in of her own child and then chasing that child out in the street like a dog and shooting her five times, I believe it was. The court further finds that it would impose these sentences irrespective of whether one or more of the aggravators. Also, Marlon, if you're out there and you want to call these agents directly to turn yourself in. At the same time, the victim's family is relieved he's finally behind bars. In the quiet suburban neighborhood of Palm Beach County, a horrifying crime unfolded that would send shock waves through the community. At the center of this dark tale is a man named Marlon Joseph, whose name would become synonymous with the heinous double murder that shattered the lives of two innocent victims and forever scarred their loved ones. It was in the year 2017 when tragedy struck the Crowell Inglet household. Kalada Crowell, a vibrant and loving mother, and her 11-year-old daughter, Kyra Inglet, were brutally taken from this world in an act of unimaginable violence. The news of their deaths spread like wildfire, casting a pall of sorrow and fear over the once serene neighborhood. Marlin Joseph, a resident of Palm Beach County, emerged as a prime suspect in this chilling crime. The very notion that a member of their own community could be responsible for such a heinous act left the residents bewildered and seeking answers. How could someone who walked among them be capable of such a brutal and heartless act? As the details of the case began to unfold, the sinister nature of the crime revealed itself. It appeared that on that fateful day, a sense of festering anger had consumed Marlin Joseph, setting in motion a chain of events that would forever alter the lives of those involved. The tranquil home on the peaceful 3rd Street would soon become a haunting crime scene, forever etched in the memories of all who witnessed the aftermath. Kalada Crowell and Kyra Inglet, both full of life and dreams, fell victim to a violence that defied comprehension. The innocence of Kyra's youth and the love of a mother taken away in an instant, leaving an irreplaceable void in the lives of their grieving family members. The shock and disbelief reverberated throughout the community as friends, neighbors, and even strangers grappled with the cold reality of the crime that had occurred in their midst. The sense of security they once cherished was shattered, replaced by an undercurrent of fear and suspicion. Marlins Joseph's name became synonymous with evil, evoking a mix of anger, sorrow, and a thirst for justice among those who sought to understand how such a tragedy could have unfolded. As his trial commenced, the courtroom was filled with intense anticipation as the community eagerly awaited the unfolding of events that would bring forth the truth and deliver the justice they so desperately sought. Marlon, if you're watching, son, just please turn yourself in. Robin Denson is Marlon Joseph's mother. She is also the girlfriend of victim Kalata Crow, and she says she will not eat until her son turns himself in. I just want to just tell you, I'm going to be there for you, Marlon. I just told my family until Marlon turned himself in, I would not. Family that may be scared to turn him in. They say you can call Crime Stoppers anonymously. The case of Marlin Joseph and the double murder of Kalada Crowell and Kyra Inglet remains etched in the annals of Palm Beach County's history. It serves as a grim reminder that darkness can lurk in the most unexpected places, even within the seemingly idyllic confines of a close-knit community. As the trial proceeded, the chilling details of the crime would come to light, exposing the depths of human depravity and the devastating impact it leaves in its way. The path to justice would be a winding and treacherous one, rife with legal complexities, emotional turmoil, and the unwavering determination of those who sought to bring closure to the grieving families. Marlin Joseph's story is not just one of crime and punishment, but also a reflection of the resilience and strength of the community that rallied together in the face of tragedy. It is a tale that serves as a stark reminder of the fragility of life, the horrors that can lurk beneath the surface, and the enduring pursuit of justice in the face of unimaginable loss. 
The journey to uncover the truth, to hold accountable those responsible, and to find solace in the aftermath of unspeakable tragedy would test the resolve of the community and the justice system. The story of Marlin Joseph and the double murder case serves as a somber reminder that evil can reside even in the most unassuming corners of society, leaving scars that may never fully heal. As the trial progressed, the eyes of the community remained fixated on the courtroom, seeking closure, hoping for justice, and praying that the memory of Kalada Crowell and Kyra Inglet would be forever honored by the deliverance of a just outcome. The Palm Beach County community forever changed this grim chapter in its history, stood united in its determination to bring the perpetrator to justice and to ensure that the memory of the victims would never fade away. The tale of Marlin Joseph and the double murder case serves as a chilling reminder that even within the confines of a seemingly peaceful neighborhood, darkness can lurk, waiting to strike. It is a story that echoes in the hearts of those touched by the tragedy, forever reminding them of the preciousness of life, the depths of human cruelty, and the strength of a community bound together in the face of adversity. The Brutal Murders As the harrowing details of the double murder emerge, the true extent of the brutality inflicted upon Kalada Crowell and her young daughter, Kyra Inglet, send shock waves through the community. Their peaceful shared residence became the backdrop for a crime scene that revealed a level of savagery that defied comprehension. The tragedy unfolded as a series of merciless gunshots that tore through the air, leaving in their wake a trail of devastation and heartbreak. Kaladi Crowell, a loving mother with dreams and aspirations, became the primary target of the attacker's fury. The echoes of the shots that struck her body reverberated with the weight of the unspeakable violence that had befallen her. The wounds inflicted upon Kalada were numerous, a chilling testament to the relentless and cold-blooded nature of the attack. Each gunshot carried with it the unimaginable pain and horror that would forever haunt those who bore witness to the aftermath. The first bullet found its mark in Kalada's hand, an instinctive gesture of self-defense that ultimately proved futile against the unrelenting force of evil that had invaded her home. The onslaught continued as the attacker callously fired shots into Kalada's belly, causing excruciating agony that must have ripped through her being. The brutality escalated further as the assailant targeted her calf, leaving yet another searing wound that served as a physical manifestation of the malevolence that had taken hold. It's a feeling of numbness tonight, knowing that their cousin's killer will be sentenced to death. Of her own child, and then chasing that child out in the street like a dog and shooting her five times, I believe it was. When you commit an offense like that, you are the poster child for the death penalty. Joseph was convicted several months longer. If there are appeals, it could be decades before an execution. But the relentless barrage did not end there. A bullet tore through Kalada's chest, further ravaging her already traumatized body. The culmination of this unspeakable act of violence came in the form of a fatal shot to her forehead, a single bullet that shattered bone and pierced the delicate recesses of her brain. In an instant, a vibrant life was extinguished, leaving behind a void that could never be filled. Tragically, young Kara Inglet, just 11 years old and filled with promise of a future yet to unfold, was not spared from the attacker's wrath. She too fell victim to the hailstorm of violence that engulfed their home. The perpetrator's callousness showed no bounds as bullets found their mark in Kyra's innocent body. The first gunshot struck her bottom, a cruel twist of fate that initiated a chain of events leading to the catastrophic loss that would follow. Another bullet pierced her lower back, inflicting unimaginable pain on a child who should have been shielded from such horrors. And then the final blow came in the form of a gunshot to the back of Kyra's head, forever silencing her youthful laughter and extinguishing the dreams that had danced in her vibrant imagination. 
The physical wounds sustained by Calada Crowell and Kyra Inglitz were not merely marks on their bodies. They were a chilling testament to the depths of human cruelty and the devastating consequences that follow. The bullets that penetrated their flesh forever scarred their loved ones, leaving behind a pain that would endure long after the echoes of the gunshots had faded. The brutal murders of Kalada Crowell and Kara Inglet etched a dark stain on the fabric of their community. Their lives were unjustly extinguished, leaving behind grieving family members and a community grappling with the anguish of such senseless violence. The scars left by these heinous acts serves as a reminder of the fragility of life and the profound impact that acts as cruelty can have on the human spirit. The memory of Kalada and Kyra will forever be held in the hearts of those who mourn their loss, serving a constant reminder of the need for justice and the urgent call to protect the sanctity of every life. Marlin Joseph's Conviction in the hushed courtroom, anticipation hung in the air like a heavy fog at the fate of Marlon Joseph, the man accused of the brutal murders of Kalada Crowell and Kyra Inglet, rested in the hands of the jury. Every eye in the room was fixed on the twelve individuals tasked with delivering a verdict that would undermine the course of justice. Months of investigation, arduous legal proceedings, and heart-wrenching testimonies had led to this pivotal moment. The weight of the evidence and the emotions of the families converge, creating an atmosphere charged with raw intensity. The time had come for the jury to render their judgment to decide whether Marlin Joseph was indeed guilty of the unfathomable crimes that had torn apart the lives of two innocent victims. As the jurors retired to the confines of their deliberation room, the courtroom seemed to hold its breath. The fate of Marlin Joseph hung in the balance and the community yearned for closure for the assurance that justice would prevail. Hours turned into agonizing eternity as the jurors poured over the evidence, dissecting every detail and wrestling with the weight of their responsibility. Finally, the doors of the deliberation room swung open and the jury re-entered the courtroom, their faces etched with a blend of solemnity and resolution. Each step they took resonated with the gravity of their task, the weight of the lives affected by their decision. In the last few minutes that Marlon Joseph, a man wanted for murder, is in custody. The court further finds that it would impose these sentences irrespective of whether one or more of the aggravator forfeited your right to live at all. Sorry, Accordingly, it is hereby ordered and you shall be executed in a method provided by Florida law. You shall receive credit pronounced for count one, and therefore there is no credit for time served on count two. Further imposes all mandatory court costs pursuant to Florida statutes, and those will be entered as the room fell into a hushed silence as the jury four persons stood, their voice breaking the stillness. We, the jury, find the defendant Marlon Joseph guilty first degree murder. A collective breath seemed to escape the room, mingling relief with a profound sense of grief. The families of Kalada Crowell and Kara Inglet, though burdened with immeasurable pain, found solace in the knowledge that the man responsible for the heinous crime would be held accountable. For Marlin Joseph, the weight of the guilty verdict settled upon him, casting a shadow over his future. The ramification of his actions had finally caught up with him, sealing his fate and condemning him to face the consequences of his monstrous deeds. The conviction of Marlin Joseph brought a sense of closure to the community that had been rocked by the tragic events. It was a bittersweet victory, a step towards healing, but one that could never fully erase the scars left by the brutal acts of violence that had forever altered their lives. As the courtroom emptied, a collective sigh of relief echoed through the hallways. The wheels of justice had turned, delivering resounding message that such acts of cruelty would not go unanswered.
The guilty verdict became a symbol of hope, a testament to the resilience of a community that had stood strong in the face of unimaginable loss. Death Sentence Imposed Following Marlin Joseph's conviction for first-degree murder in the deaths of Kalada Crowell and Kyra Inglet, Circuit Judge Cheryl Caracuso imposed the death sentence. The decision was made after considering the jury's unanimous recommendation. Marlin Joseph became the first Palm Beach County resident in 18 years to be sentenced to death row. Judge Caracuso based her decision on the evidence presented during the trial, which established Joseph's guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. The death sentence signifies the gravity of the crimes committed by Joseph. It reflects the court's determination that murders of Kalada Crowell and Kyra Inglet were particularly heinous, deserving of the harshest punishment available under the law. Judge Caracuso's decision prompted discussions and debates within the community about the use of capital punishment. Some view the death sentence as a just consequence for Joseph's actions, emphasizing the need for justice and accountability in cases of such brutality. Others raise concerns about the ethics and effectiveness of the death penalty as a deterrent or a means of achieving justice. The families of Kalada Crowell and Kyra Inglet, while coping with immeasurable grief, found some solace in the court's decision. But can you please just turn yourself in? If you're scared to win since day one, he will bring me, he will bring me to you, Marley. I also want justice for Kalada and Kyra. You know both of them meant the world to me. You know them. Are posting a reward up to five thousand dollars for the arrest of Marlon Joseph. Um, we'd like to get that out to the scene in a gray Camry. This flyer is going to be uh, given to all the media right here. It has the numbers to call. Also, Marlon, if you're out there and you want to call these agents directly to turn yourself in. The imposed death sentence provided a sense of closure and acknowledgement of devastating loss they had suffered. Marlin Joseph, now facing the prospect of life on death row, will endure a lengthy legal process, including appeals and further proceedings. The imposition of the death sentence marked a significant turning point in his journey through the criminal justice system. Palm Beach County, impacted by this high-profile case, experienced the sobering realization that such acts of violence can strike close to home. The community grappled with the profound consequences of Joseph's actions, reflecting on the need for measures to prevent future tragedies and promote a safer society. The imposition of the death sentence upon Marlon Joseph serves as a reminder of the complex and challenging nature of the justice system. It highlights the enduring questions surrounding capital punishment and its role in society, provoking ongoing discussions about its merits, drawbacks, and alternatives. Defense's Arguments In a courtroom charged with tension and emotion, Marlin Joseph's defense attorney Fred Susanek rose to challenge the severity of the crimes that had cast a dark shadow over the proceedings. With unwavering conviction, he embarked on a mission to dismantle the prosecution's case and advocate for a different outcome. Susanek's fervent argument centered on the assertion that the murders did not satisfy the criteria of being heinous, atrocious, and cruel, a threshold that according to the defense warranted a less severe penalty. He implored the court to reconsider the imposition of death sentence, emphasizing the potential for a miscarriage of justice and the need for a fresh opportunity to uncover the truth. With an unwavering determination, Susan X sought to dismantle the prosecution's case brick by brick. He meticulously examined the evidence, aiming to expose any inconsistencies or doubts that may have tainted the foundation upon which the guilty verdict was built. His impassioned plea echoed through the courtroom, urging the courtroom to overturn the convictions and sentence and grant Marlon Joseph a chance at redemption through a new trial. Susan X's arguments extended beyond the question of the severity of the crimes. 
He contended that multiple mistakes had been made during the trial, asserting that they had contributed what we perceive as an unjust outcome. He highlighted alleged errors in the proceedings, challenging the admissibility of certain evidence and questioning the fairness of the trial process itself. One key point of contention revolved around the admission of testimony regarding Joseph's warning to Kyra Inglet, indicating that he would give her one more chance to correct her behavior. Joseph to Lake Worth. They say no one gave them any tips. They used it through, they used investigative work to, at the same time, the victim's family is relieved he's finally behind bars. The grace of God, they caught the person who did it. And it's sad, it's sad. That's all we all say, it's sad. That it happened. Susanick argued that this warning was not indicative of an intention to commit murder and that similar admonishments were commonplace among parents. He sought to undermine the significance of this warning, suggesting that it had been unfairly leveraged to sway the jury's perception of Joseph's culpability. Throughout his argument, Susanek passionately advocated for a reconsideration of the convictions and sentence imposed upon his client. He probed the boundaries of the law, challenging the severity of the punishment and emphasizing the importance of a fair and impartial trial. His words reverberated through the courtroom, leaving an indelible impression on all those who bore witness to his impassioned plea for justice. As the defense's arguments echoed through the hallowed halls of the courtroom, they kindled a flicker of doubt in the minds of some observers. The case, which had seemed to be clear-cut instance of unfathomable violence, now stood on a precipice of uncertainty. The defense's persistent challenges invited a deeper reflection on the gravity of the crimes and the appropriateness of the death penalty. In the end, the decision rested with the court, a decision that would shape the trajectory of Marlon Joseph's life and reverberated through the annals of legal history. The arguments put forth by the defense cast a spotlight on the delicate balance between justice and compassion, igniting a fiery debate that would persist long after the gavel fell on the courtroom emptied. Prosecutor's Case Assistant Attorney General Rhonda Giger masterfully wove together the stands of evidence, unraveling Marlon Joseph's threats and motives with compelling clarity. The courtroom listened intently as she skillfully painted a portrait of a man driven by anger and a desire for retribution. Giger presented evidence that Marlon Joseph had issued a warning, ominously indicating that Kyra Inglet had one final chance to mend her behavior. This crucial piece of information shed light on the brewing tensions within the household and provided insight into Joseph's mindset. Giger argued that Joseph's actions were not impulsive but calculated, driven by a deep-seated anger fueled by an argument between Kyra and his own daughter. By meticulously connecting the dots, Giger wove a narrative that left little room for doubt. She emphasized that Joseph made good on his threat, capitalizing on the volatile situation and exacting his revenge in a cruel and heartless manner. The jury was left with a haunting image of Joseph's actions, one that was impossible to ignore. Each with detail presented, Giger skillfully crafted a mosaic of motives and circumstances, aiming to establish a clear and compelling case against Marlon Joseph. By peering into the depths of his anger and uncovering the threads of his intentions, she aimed to leave an indelible impression on the jury's collective conscience. As Giger's arguments reverberated through the courtroom, the weight of the evidence presented became increasingly apparent. The picture that emerged was one of a man driven by anger and a distorted sense of justice, leading to the tragic loss of two innocent lives. The prosecutor's case struck a chord, resonating with the jury and solidifying their belief in Marlon Joseph's guilt. Supreme Court's Ruling after thorough review and consideration, the Florida Supreme Court delivered its ruling affirming Marlon Joseph's death sentence and first-degree murder convictions. 
The highest judicial body in the state carefully examined the case, scrutinizing the evidence, the court's rulings, and the jury's verdict. In its deliberations, the Supreme Court focused on determining whether there was substantial and competent evidence to support the convictions. After meticulous analysis, they concluded that the evidence presented during the trial indeed substantiated the jury's verdict of guilt. The court emphasized that the jury had carefully weighed the facts and rendered a unanimous decision based on the weights of the evidence presented. How this was a hard-working mother, a TSA officer at MIA, and you tonight, you said it, a Cotton killed him a week ago. Tonight, new information on what happened last Thursday, according to detectives along 3rd Street. Happened. And according to this arrest, arrest report, excuse me, Joseph didn't like Kyra's attitude. Furthermore, the Supreme Court deemed the trial court's rulings to be sound and in accordance with the law. They found that the trial court had properly considered the aggravating and mitigating circumstances and had exercised its discretion in imposing the death sentence. The court acknowledged the gravity of the crimes committed and concluded that the punishment was justified within the legal framework. Controversies and Mistakes Throughout the trial, the defense raised several concerns regarding potential mistakes and injustices that they believed tainted the proceedings. These contentions added fuel to the controversy surrounding the case, further complicating the quest for a fair and just resolution. One of the key issues raised by the defense was the admission of certain evidence that they argued should have been excluded from the trial. They contended that the jury should not have been allowed to hear certain information such as Marlin Joseph's warning to Kyra Inglet which they claimed was not indicative of an intention to commit murder. Additionally, the defense argued that similar warnings given by parents to their children should not be misconstrued as evidence of murderous intent. Another point of contention was the surprise witness testimony introduced by the prosecution. The defense argued that this witness should not have been allowed to testify as the defense had not been adequately informed in advance. They asserted that this surprise testimony deprived them of the opportunity to present their own expert to challenge the assertions made by the witness. The defense claimed that this omission undermined their ability to provide a robust and comprehensive defense. These alleged mistakes and controversies surrounding the trial procedures added an additional layer of complexity to an already emotionally charged case. And in combination with each other, more than sufficient to justify a sentence of death. As to mission, the court then undertook the weighing of the proven aggravating factors against the established mitigating circumstances. Moreover, this court recognizes it must give great weight to the jury's recommendations presented. This court finds the aggravating factors heavily outweigh the mitigating circumstances. They serve as a focal point for the defense's argument that the outcome was unjust as they believe that these factors had contributed to an unfair trial and ultimately an unfavorable verdict for Marlin Joseph. As the legal battle moved forward, the controversies and alleged mistakes continued to steer debate among legal experts, scholars, and the public at large. The competing narratives and differing interpretations of the trial proceedings further underscored the importance of a thorough and impartial examination of the case. That's all for this video, folks. See you next time.